Okay, I think everything should be working all right. Okay, so uh, I'm not sure if anyone who will be watching today uh, will remember it, given it was a while back now. Um, but tonight I thought we'd have a bit of a relaxed stream. There's enough stress going around right now as is. Uh, and we'd revisit the programming we were doing about two weeks ago now, maybe three weeks ago, uh, for the Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes uh, vanilla module passwords. Um, so passwords is a module in which basically you are selecting among a combination lock style sequence the one correct password out of the set. Um, and... Sorry, I'm just prepping some code here. Um, while we did get pre fairly far in the coding process, there were some imperfect decisions, um, as in cryptographically or, uh, I guess, theoretically imperfect. So I would like to revisit that code and try to address some of those issues. So I will go ahead and switch it over to screens to show the screen. There we go. And so you see I have two windows here. I've basically just copied this old code into a new area here so that uh, a lot of this is going to be rewritten, um, which is fine. Probably we'll actually just basically remove all of this, as sad as it is. Although I might, we might keep some of these little bits of code. Um, but I have gone through and thought back through the process here and made a little list of what would be a... Yes, I do not remember if this was recorded either. Uh, it may have been the week before we started recording. Uh, and even then, it would be gone within a week, so... Um... But uh, this is the uh, process I'm hoping to go through. So uh, the original method we used was, um, oh, I have some updates. Might as well run those while I'm talking. Um, so the original thing we had gone through was, what is it? Want? Looks like, oh, just RTC lib and uh, Asaya, okay. So what we originally had done is filled an array. Um, basically, we chose a word, filled an array entirely with letters, um, a two-dimensional two array to represent all the letters, and then went through uh, this mess of code um, and basically checked if a, an array was possible. I believe this code is right here. So we chose our word. We iterated across an array, uh, except for that word, and then basically removed one random position in there. Uh, but if it was, if we couldn't do that, we would move one to the right um, until all the options were exhausted, um, so, which was a bit of a nightmare code-wise, but also isn't quite uh, perfect. Might not be the best word for it. But so one thing is this always will begin with the early words in the list. So this will always start with about and end with right, no matter what's going on. And so that means that uh, as an example, let's say in the fourth position, so it gets to this, let this word right here, right? It has a one in five chance of removing the letter E right here. And if it does, then words like never will be removed, other, uh, water, all these things with the E in that position, right? Now, if this was rearranged so that, say, water came first, it might remove the W, and then it would get over to here and remove the E. So it would remove both the W and the E. But if after comes first, it might remove the E, and then because this is already not possible because of that E, it wouldn't remove the W. Which means that the order of these two, just as an example, 
actually can matter. So you'll get different results if they were in a different order. And in general, if order matters and the order is consistent, uh, so basically by doing that, we just proved that the order of the list does matter. It can affect the results of the semi-random thing. Uh, if it matters, which it does in this case, uh, then you want to randomize it if you want a truly random sequence. And so what we would what we would preferably do, which is what we'll do here, is we want to shuffle this list before we do anything with it to make sure its order doesn't affect the rest of the process. Um, and I think we actually have a shuffling. Okay, no, we, we didn't actually write a shuffler, which we'll have to make one. I think we actually made one for a different piece of code. I remember, I specifically remember us making a Durstenfeld shuffle for something. Um, but I do not remember what. So, uh, the other thing is that right now, and I'm going to look for the spot where this happens. Yes. This bit of code right here has two problems with it. Um, one of them is that it will always bias toward the character to the right of a common letter. There's some weird reasons for why that happens, but basically uh, it's most likely to choose letters to the right uh, of specific other word letters in the position. And that's not good. <laughs> um, preferably it would have a random chance of picking any of the letters, or at least an equal chance going left and right. And so we're going to fix that, which here, basically the, the way this pseudocode will do it is it actually will shuffle uh, into a small list and then we'll move across that list. And finally, something that doesn't matter in this circumstance, but could matter in the context of, so we only have 49 words here. And of these 49, the majority of them share like, I don't believe in the first position, for example. So we have an A, a B, a C. There is no D. An E, an F, a G, an H. There is no I. There is no J. There is no K, an L. There is no M, an N. You get the idea that we're missing letters in this list. Um, let's see. Alternative option, you could leave all these glitches and tell people. <laughs> um, I mean, I, in the, so the code we have here does work. And as far as a human is concerned, it probably isn't possible to tell that it doesn't have any of these issues. But there's also slight, so like this issue here is that right now we don't have a thing in every position, right? We are m intentionally missing letters. But if we had a word for every letter in the alphabet and then removed all possible letters, that would be a big problem. Um, so what we can do to avoid that is actually keep track of how many letters are left so that we can always actually make the complete sequence of six at the end. In, in this case, with these words, it should never be an issue. I believe there is never a situation, and I haven't checked this, but I would assume, uh, given the letters that are here, there is never a situation in which removing all of a, a, a specific letter. So if I went down the list and removed every single one of these letters, so L, S, R, E, S, R, N, L, you're hearing the same one a lot of the times. And so I think there are always at least six letters that are not occurring in each word which is all we need to verify, to make sure that this program works. But I happen to know that some people are interested in adding their own words. And in that situation, we probably want this program to be well enough written where it can notice that when there's an issue, report it and potentially also fix itself. Um, it's just good practice to have code that won't break given new circumstances. So we can keep a lot of this code. Um, num letters, I think is fine. Uh, first letter, I am not, okay, that's just letter A. Um, let's see, bool, all options, letter, yeah. Okay, so this 
is still fine. We still want all options, but then we also want a new array under it. It is an int, and this we'll call this one. Um, I think I actually even gave it a name over here. Yep, we called it letters left. Uh, and I kind of, hmm. We might want to change some of these terms around to make them a little more convenient for us. So one thing I am going to do is I'm going to start placing these in line with each other. Makes them look nice. Something like that. Or yeah, maybe, maybe like that. So let's see. So we have a Boolean. I actually want to align that left if I can. Integer. This is an array. And so at this point, we do have a kind of a choice of if we want to make um, that right. And then this will be equals. And we actually do know what this will be. This will just be 26 five times. Now, in this case, we're assuming that all these words are five letters long. That is a choice we could make not the case. And I kind of like the idea of this being, if we're going through all this effort, we might as well make the code be able to handle more letters, I think. Um, so let's do that too. We'll do a const int, call this, um, well, num letters has already been used. Um, so let's call this, well, actually, so num letters is actually describing the number of possible letters in the language in use. Um, the only reason I included this is because if you are using this in, say, Russian, they do not have 26 letters in their alphabet, or at least they're not the same ones. So it would be good to deal with that. What I also have realized now, though, is that that probably doesn't matter because uh, as it stands, we are assuming that the letters of the language are in order, which I believe is only the case for English. Um, as an example, in Spanish, you have the, I believe it's called the Inye, um, the little in with the wiggly on top. And I don't believe the Inye is anywhere close to the other letters in the font. Um, as far as like action, so, and the reason I'm saying this is, uh, Arduino is based on Unicode and, or sorry, is based on, um, well, it technically what we're using here is not Unicode. Technically what we are using here is the U8G2 graphical library, which I will bring up here. This is an amazingly powerful library and also has amazing documentation which is super helpful in situations like this. So we can see if I go to all fonts, they're all organized by pixel height, which is very convenient. Uh, if we go to, but the main thing is, is that the character sets are important. So there are the 128 character glyph and then the subset glyphs. Um, the maximum it has is the F character set, which has 256 glyphs. Uh, if we move to a, oh, I want UHG2 fonts. Um, so if we just pick a font here, let's go with something around the 30 pixel range. And we are looking for a full font, which is a type F font. Ah, thanks for including that, yep. So if I go to any of the type F fonts, it literally does, so, <laughs> Sorry. So you can see there actually are some other language sans here in other languages. And so I'm, I'm just kind of curious how they are organized. Oh goodness, so much text. Um, let's go with something like that. FD. Yeah, so you can see they still have A, B, C, D, E, F, G up here in the normal positions. But then they start adding the other letters way down here. And in arguably random positions. Um, 
You can see that these numbers uh, do, I believe they do not move up in, you can see there's a jump here from 1,000 to 8,000. And so they are not, while they are in the order correct for that language, they are not in any reasonable order as far as we're concerned. So, that said, I don't know if there is any benefit to us including more than 26 letters. Because any more than that, and we would have to, we would be assuming that they're going to use a font that places those letters in reasonable positions after the fact of A. So if we start at A and we go from there, um, which for, say, Spanish, I don't believe would be the case. In fact, let's see if we can find a Spanish font here. Uh, well, I'm not seeing anything labeled as specifically a Spanish font. It might just be that they are included in normal ones. Let's grab a full font, one of these, look at, and look at its font reference. Go to somewhere where we can actually read them. Um, it looks, yeah, so it looks like the the capital N Y A is way down here, um, and is located at. Is this the first instance of it? Yes, it is. This looks like N Y A is located at like two hundred and nine, whereas Z is all the way up here at like. 80 something. <laughs> and so that 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 basically that that means that there is no sense in doing this because the code will inherently have to either be modified or which may be more likely um, whoever changes the code will have to change it so that the font includes these other characters in different positions. Um, there are a few ways around this I can think of, one of which would be to define all the letters ahead of time, which maybe is a good idea. Um, hmm. That legitimately might be worthwhile. So what I'm thinking here is what we could do, if we really wanted to make this flexible, would be not only to include the first letter, uh, but to actually just do a const car, uh, I want to make sure I do this the right way, uh, we call it alphabet equals, and then we would literally do an array in which the only things in it are the entire alphabet. So, and what is kind of nice about this would be that we would be actually making this flexible enough to even accept characters that are not in, are not reliably in any language. Um, hmm. So I guess the question here is what does, let me just check what Arduino character looks like. So Arduino car. What I'm curious about here is I want to see if car goes all the way up to putting in an ASCII chart, alphanumeric characters, characters using 66, um, at least 8 bits. So it is an 8-bit data type. Let's check this chart. Um, assuming this chart is actually inclusive of things other than English, I think it is worthwhile to allow this code to be multilingual. A little silly, but I think it's worthwhile. <laughs> um, I have no idea why my this is not loading. Could be my internet is slow. Is the stream still working all right? I'm not able to load here, so I'm not sure if uh, it's working great. Okay, I guess this is just taking priority over the website loading. That's fine. 
Maybe we'll come back to it a little bit and see if it's loaded. Um, hmm. Well, it is using ASCII, so let's just check. Just grab an ASCII chart. So it looks like. So we have eight bits to work with, um, which would be up to. I believe that would be a hundred and uh, two hundred fifty-six, right? Um, let's see, one, two, four, eight. Uh, sixteen, thirty, sixty-four, one, twenty-eight. No, I think that would be only up to maybe 128. Wait, one. Oh, no, no, sorry. 246, 248, 16, 30, 64. No, I think it would be 256 uh, possibilities. So, we could assume that our ASCII chart, well, that just didn't work. Um, Oh, it's from through Cloudflare. Okay, there might be issues right now using the internet with what's going on in the world. Um, I, I maybe should have seen that coming. Um, so it looks like that. So uh, ASCII, for those unfamiliar, um, is a seven-bit format. It's not designed for all eight bits to be used. Uh, it only uses seven bits, which means that it doesn't. En it ends uh, pretty far ahead of. Um, like pretty far ahead of where we would normally end language. And so because of that, hmm, the real question is, is, uh, is Arduino's 8-bit or 7-bit? It says 8-bit here, but that doesn't exactly give us, make that a sure thing. Um, but I can't load up the chart. So I think we're just gonna just gonna assume that it's fine and we, we're, we, it's worthwhile to make an array. Um, so uh, well there's no reason to have first letter now. That is no longer a useful thing. And hmm. I guess we'll have to iterate it over this array whenever we need to know something, which doesn't give us a number, which is maybe, maybe problematic. Um, yeah, okay, so based on our approach, we, we were expecting English, let's just do it in English. <laughs> we'll make that decision now, goodness, it's already been half an hour. Yeah, okay, let's just make the decision, it's gonna be in English. So const, um, we don't even need that bit of code then, yeah. Uh, so, what do we actually need? So we do need a yeah, string all all words we do need. Um, we need letters left. We need... Yes. And we need... Uh, Okay, I think let all options is maybe not the best. It's one thing, we're just gonna start using 26. Doesn't make sense to have that. Um, so, given that, that, and then all options is a Boolean array of all, oops, there we go. This is a Boolean array. Uh, I don't believe there's a way to set every item in the Boolean array. It will start as false. So we will have to set them all as true. Um, unless I am remiss remembering about how arrays work. Which I will check really quick because we might as well. Or I will not check because Arduino is apparently basically down. Um, <laughs> so we'll just do it manually. Um, so we have our array, five letters, 26. We have all of our words. Um, 
which we will actually maybe call possible words or uh, I guess all words isn't a terrible name for that array. So we have string all words and we have a word count. We have our chosen word. So this is one thing. I'm actually getting rid of chosen word. We don't need it anymore. What we do need, and we also do not need chosen word index. But what we do need is we need a second array. Uh, right, this can be const. We do need a second array, which we will just call um, yeah, we need a second array or, hmm. So the question is, doesn't matter if we shuffle this again. Um, Cause we're gonna shuffle this array. In theory, we might play multiple games before we end. So in theory, this, this uh, array might get shuffled more than once. But given shuffling should never theoretically cause an array to become less random, because it's just as random to shuffle it then. I think we're okay. And I think we can actually just leave this as is um, without any issues. So yeah, I think this is okay. As long as some bit doesn't get flipped somewhere, it shouldn't be, I think we're okay. So I think this is all the data we need ahead of time. Um, we're going to go with that. Also, why is this line here? Is that being used somewhere? I think we are just going to get rid of all the setup code. We're going to have to change all of it. <laughs> um, well, except maybe that. Uh, well, well, we'll wait. Okay. So, what of these do, do we want to keep? Reset possible letters. What this function does is it sets everything to true within the num... Wait num letters oh this is just 26 now I'm actually gonna just do a find num letters replace with 26 uh, replace all hopefully that doesn't go horribly wrong okay um, so this is fine so I'm actually going to change the name of this function though and we're gonna call it um, so we actually called it, yeah, it's all options. So we'll actually make it a general reset routine. So reset everything. <laughs> We're going to change it to just reset everything. And so it does need to go through all of that and iterate and change that. But we also need it to go through the other array here, this letters left, and make all of those normal again. So for, um, we can basically just grab this chunk of code here. It's gonna be roughly the same. But instead, uh, and instead of doing what we were doing before, we're just going to set each of them to 26. So letters left, at position i is equal to 26. And we should be good there. Uh, oh, this should not no longer be a constant string. It's gonna be a string. Um, given that, I think, so we are gonna need to make some temporary variables here and there to hold things, but I think we're good there. Um, okay, I think reset everything should be okay. You know what? We'll have reset everything also shuffle the array, which brings us to a thing we have to figure out. Um, this is going to involve a lot of shuffling, this new way of doing things. And so we're definitely going to need a function for shuffling things. Um, there are a few ways we could do this. Hmm.
But I think it's go always going to be shuffling strings. Um, actually, no, it won't. It'll sometimes shuffle a number. Hmm. But let's see what we can do. So we'll do we'll call this um, shuffle array. And it's going to need to pull in an array, and it's going to need to shuffle it and then put it back out. Um, the type of all words is a string array. Can we put a string array as an input? I haven't actually tried that. Test array, print entire array. Hmm. So we might have to do this by individual functions rather than being a one universal function situation. Um, unless, is there Arduino reference alive again? Let's see. Looking like a no. Okay. Well, we'll do this. Yeah, we'll just have to do it. We'll make a function called shuffle word list. And it'll just shuffle the word list. <laughs> so to shuffle a list, as we discussed a while back with the Durstenfeld shuffle, <laughs> um, which is a uh, implementation of, I believe, the uh, Yates. Uh, let me let's see. Durstenfeld shuffle is yep. So it's an implementation of the Fisher Yates shuffle, uh, but that specifically works when you have li a limited amount of space. Um, because unlike paper and pencil, yep, here we go, Durstenfeld's version, um, we have a limited amount of memory that we cannot change. So we have to basically do things within the confines of this array. So, um, given the array we have to work within, we can do some work here. So, what we need to do is we need to basically decide if we're going to be do doing this right-handed or left-handed. Um... So are the words, as, as we go along, are we going to store the, the shuffled part of the array to the right or the shuffled part of the array to the left? Um, I find it slightly easier to think about when I'm shuffling to the left. So I think I'm gonna shuffle left. And so what we're gonna do here is we are going to need to iterate across every item in the list. <laughs> you vote left. <laughs> um, yeah, so we'll, we'll move the, uh, or we'll, we'll keep things to the left, we'll shuffle in the left, we'll move things to the right, I think is the, well, yes, yeah, we'll shuffle to the left, we'll shuffle in the left, move things to the right. Um, so we'll actually be doing the same thing as the code here. Um, so basically, as we pick something at random, it gets moved all the way to the right, and we keep shuffling everything in the left until we have everything on the right. Um, so, what we first need to do here is we need to set, uh, as usual, we're going to be doing the shuffling with a, a for loop. So for int i equals zero i is less than, in this case, we're gonna be shuffling up to the number, so um, rather than call this all word count, we'll just call this word count. Doesn't make sense to have this be more complicated than it needs to be. So word count. And I plus plus, like usual. So within that, so if every time we start in a new position, we need to pick a position from, so when we first start out, so word count will start out as uh, zero. Yes, we'll start out as zero. So this is the zeroth position, this is the, um, would that be the 20, or in this case, the 49th position I get? Or wait, this would be 48, sorry, because uh, human numbers versus 
computer numbers. Computer numbers start at zero, we start at one. Um, <laughs> so, we need to pick a position we are swapping with. So to pick that position, we are going to do a, um, I believe the function is just called random. I'm gonna double check my, I'm sure I've used it here somewhere. <laughs> yeah, random, okay. And this generates a number from zero to the one, well, it generates one, one lower than the highest number we put in, which in this case, if we started with 49, the same thing as word count, it could pick any number here, which is what we want. Um, we want any nut, well, let me double check the Durstenfeld shuffle. So we are going, when we first start out, we pick, yes, all numbers are possible. Okay, that's what I wanted to check. Um, so in, the, as in this example, we start from one to eight. Eight is possible. So we're gonna first shuffle everything. So uh, we have our random number here. We need to take this number and the very last number in the array and swap them. So we're gonna to wanna to hold on to this number. So I'm actually gonna do a, we'll say int swap pause, which is the swap position, is that. So this is the position we're swapping with. And we can't do word count because that doesn't change. We want to do word count minus i so that the range gets smaller every single time it looks so we now have a position we're going to swap with so we need to store what's in that position or what's in the last position um, i'm going to store what's in that position temporarily so we're going to have a string temp and we're going to set that equal to whatever is in that position. So in this case, that would be all words at position swap pause. So we've grabbed whatever the word was at that position. Now we need to grab uh, move what was in the, well, actually let's save what's at the end. Uh, only because I think this makes the theory of it in your head a little easier. Um, so we're going to take the thing that is in the very end of the list that we are working with, which in this case would always be uh, word count minus i. So word count's highest position will be at 48. Or sorry, no, word count will be at 49 minus 0 would be 49 um, so we also need to do minus 1 <laughs> minus I um, let's actually do this minus I plus 1 I think that just looks nicer makes more sense <laughs> um, the reason we don't do a minus a plus 1 here is because here we're looking at the position in the array, um, which ranges from zero to 48. So word count would be 49, um, but in this case, random, you need this to be one more than the highest number you want. And so the, there's basically a, plus, a minus one plus one here, they cancel out, so we don't need to worry about it, but we do need a plus one here. Um, I'm hoping that makes sense why we're doing that. Like, there's a lot of weirdness here that we're having to deal with in the fact that Arduino numbers things from zero, um, whereas when we're writing something like word count, as humans, we're going to write it as the total number, which starts at one. Because for us, the first of something is one. For a computer, the first of something is zero. Um, and that's just been the convention and that's now how it works, so we deal with it. Um, so, 
what we've done now is we basically grabbed the word at the end at word count minus uh, i plus one. From here, we now need to move whatever was in the swap position to this position. So we're going to move it by a by doing a so all words at the position where we are at here at the end, um, which would be word count minus i plus one. So here at this position we just stored the number from. We're setting that equal to all words at the swap position like that and now we can move that temporary thing back to where it needs to go which in this case is the swap position so all words at swap position is going to be equal to And so what we've done is we basically just picked a random position and swapped whatever was in that random position with whatever was at the end of the list. And I believe this is the entire shuffle. Uh, but it's probably best to double check that. So I'm going to go ahead and plug up an ESP32. There we go. And we're going to uh, get rid of all the code here, like we said we would for real now. Um, all of this code goes away. And all of this can, st well, okay, it's so not all of it can stay. I think we're gonna actually have to comment out all of it. Um, so everything from here on. We're just going to do a one of these wonderful little things that is a everything comment. Oops, slash star, and then at the very bottom we do star slash, and basically it'll ignore everything in this middle bit. So we're going to wait a little bit. We're going to start the serial monitor. We're going to reset everything. And then we want to try this. So we're going to do the shuffle word list. Run that. Then we want to print the entire uh, word array. So we can do that by doing for uh, I can just do this for all words. Not sure if this actually works, but I guess we'll find out. Serial dot print line. Okay, no, I don't think I can do this. So for uh, word count, I think that's allowable. Actually, we need a variable anyway, so int i equals zero, i is less than word count i plus plus, oops. print the word uh, so that would be all words at position I so I think what this would give us is in theory if everything worked right 
And I'm also going to do a print here. So I'm going to print everything once. And then I'm going to print dot print line. Just going to print nothing for a line. We're going to do the reset everything. We'll do a short delay to make sure that the serial monitor got everything. And we'll do that. Okay, so I think we're ready. Uh, I need to change this to an ESP32 dev. And go ahead and verify it. I think COM6 is the correct port. Uh, what's wrong here? Identify our expected numer or numeric constant. Shuffle word list. Um, where? I think we're missing a bracket somewhere. <laughs> that would be the most likely answer as to what happened. Um, oh, yes, here we go. These needs to be brackets. <laughs> yep, debugging time as usual. Uh, okay, that got that was a little bit better. Um, shuffle word list was not declared. I think it's just because I forget. Yep, I miscapitalized. Shuffle word list. Verify. I think that should be everything. And it's looking a lot better. I think we should. I think that was the bug. Okay, we're done compiling. Okay, so I'm going to upload that. And what we should see in the serial monitor when it's done is the letter in order. Uh, I'm at the wrong baud rate. Okay. Oh, goodness. Okay, so this is what I was kind of expecting to happen, maybe, is that there's a lot of um, weirdness there. But let's, uh, let's fix that really quick. So for, uh, if you're not familiar, serial is a little weird. It requires some time uh, to actually send things. And so to make sure that happens, I'm just going to add in really short delays. Um, but that should be enough time for it to actually send all that data. Because it is a lot of data. So let's try that. And hmm, so there's still some weirdness here, I feel like, right? Because we got this nice array here, and we're just kind of missing chunks of this one, um, which is not a good sign. Uh, how many words do we have here? Let's see. So that's the full 49. Um, so let's see, that takes up the entire screen there. Okay, this might be okay. It actually seems like everything is here. It's just spaced out weirdly. Um, <laughs> yeah, th these are these are not good passwords here. These empty ones. Um, let's see. Why could the, why would that be happening though? Why, why am I getting random empty characters being sent through? Because um, if any of them are empty, we need to know. That's important. Um, so, okay, it's the same. I really don't feel like it's going to be a time issue in this case. Um, 
question is, is it reliable? Because if it's reliable, there, that means there's a more obvious uh, chance that it is something very wrong. Um, let's find out. Hmm. So one thing, there's a very large gap here, and there's actually a, a character there, which is why? Why is there this big gap here? That's the first question. Um. We have all the words. Wood, right. There. There. Well, these are all the correct words. Then there's just this giant gap, um, which there's no code that we have here that would ge be generating a giant gap. Um, unless reset everything or shuffle word list have something that would print in them. Um, no prints there, no prints there. No, there's no prints. Uh, I am not sure where these new line characters are coming from. It's fairly reliable. Did the same thing every time too. Again. Below. No, it's not. It's not the same thing every time. Uh, that is very weird. Two words at the bottom. One word. I have no idea what these spaces in between things are. Hmm. That's very weird. I don't like that I can't trust my own um, serial monitor if that's the case. Because that is an important troubleshooting tool we have. Hmm. It's just kind of putting random new line characters in there. Um, it could be that this connection isn't reliable, this USB cable. Um, that would be weird, but I guess possible. I'm going to lower the baud rate, I think. This would make it more stable. Hopefully. Although it will take longer. Still doing it. Very similarly too, so it's clearly not that. Also gonna give this more time. I don't think that's going to do anything, but I can always try. Hmm. Where are those returns coming from? Any, there isn't anything empty in this, is there? Okay, I, th I hate doing it, but I think I need to count how many are here. So... Um, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 24, 25, 26, 
seven, three, three, nine, thirty, three, one, three, two, three, 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 four, three, five. That's far too few. Uh, wait. So this is for there are forty nine here. Are there forty nine up here? In this well, let me redo it. Oh, could it be running no wait. Okay, we, we need to figure out if there's words missing here. So small all right small sound spell still study there there these thing think three no they all seem to be here um <laughs> hmm But there are not 49 words here. What? <laughs> um, what? <laughs> there aren't 49 words here, but this is 49 words. What? What's missing? Or am I just blind to something? Great house. No, so... If I just take all of this, I'm going to put in the text document here. Um, grab a um, grab an instance of Adam. Hmm. Hate grabbing the corners of things. Okay, so if I grab an instance of Adam, I'm just going to make a new document here. Um, that can be closed. Not in that. Okay. So, of all these words, yeah, there are only 35 words here. Uh, we're missing words. What? Wait a second. Wait, this is 5 by 7. This is 5 by 7. There are not 49 words, there are 35 words. Okay, problem solved. <laughs> uh, I have no idea where the 49 came from, I just never questioned it. Okay, that explains the whole problem. Let's upload this. <laughs> so it was shuffling nothings, that's why it was so angry. It had created nothings and was shuffling them. Okay, what do we got now? That looks much more reasonable. <laughs> so I think this is fully shuffled. Let's see, point is at the beginning, three is at the end. Yeah, that looks shuffled to me. Um, let's grab this whole array. Let's go over into Atom again. Let's just make sure there are 35 things. There are 35 things, okay. I think we've solved the, myst the great mystery of the disappearing numbers, uh, or letters. <laughs> Uh, the answer was they were never there to begin with. Um, <laughs> okay, so there are 35 of these. I don't know how, where we got a 49 from. I'm just going to hide that. It doesn't matter. Um, it's problem mystery solved. Okay. <laughs> so, we have a thing that shuffles the array. That's what we were trying to get. Uh, we, we have a, a shuffler. That's all we needed. Um, so, uh, <laughs> all of this code is no longer necessary. Um, we'll just get rid of all of this. Uh, we won't even print a new line. We'll just do a... So, uh, I, don't, I don't know if there's actually a reason to put a delay there, but I am going to put a delay after the serial just to make sure everything's okay. So we're going to uh, reset everything and shuffle the word list. Or actually, if I remember correctly, reset everything does shuffle. Did we make it shuffle the word list? We didn't. Okay, we're going to make reset everything also shuffle the word list. So we're just going to have it run shuffle word list. 
as part of its code. And we're going to make sure shuffle word list is below. The reset everything just in case it, it theoretically shouldn't matter, but we're going to do that. So now we can reset everything correctly, um, which is an improvement. So now we can actually get to the stuff I wanted to get to today. Goodness, we spent an hour just troubleshooting the old stuff. Okay. So um, I think we can actually just kind of get rid of all of this code. I mean, it might still be kind of useful, but I don't think it, it, it might just be more of a hindrance, so I'm going to get rid of it. Um, so, now that we've shuffled it, we already have our selected word. I'm just going to say that the first word is the selected word, because it's just easier that way. So let's go ahead and make a little thing. So we're going to do serial dot print line, or sorry, serial dot print. And we're going to say the selected word is, and then we'll do a serial dot print line. And we're just going to grab all words at position zero and print that. So we're going to just say the first thing in the list is the word we're picking. It's the it's the special word. Um, so now we need. <laughs> okay, maybe it wasn't the best thing. We're, we we can probably reuse a little bit of that code we had before. Let me let me find it. So I have I have a copy, of course. Uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna edit code and not keep a copy of what I made. Um, so, uh, what we do need is, is word possible? This is useful. I'm going to copy that here. And we're going to put it in, but we're probably going to have to mess with it a bit. So down here, we're going to create a function, bool. Is word possible? And we're going to take in a string test word. Uh, so, this, some of this I believe will need to change, but I need to double check. So. Um, bool letter is not possible false four three five uh, letters oh uh, right num letters is just 26 um, and then Let's see, so um, so we're gonna use all options. Letters left doesn't matter. Um, let's see. Is where possible? I'm just trying to re decipher my own code. Goodness, it's been a little bit. Um, so basically, we're going through each position in the word and then each letter within that and we're checking if the character equal to first letter plus wait I think this is needlessly complicated I'm pretty sure this is needlessly complicated This is absolutely uh, needlessly complicated. Uh, this makes no sense whatsoever. Um, so I'm going to get rid of all that. Um, why did I write it this way? Goodness. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, the me from the past is an interesting person. Um, so... I was checking through every single spot in an array for something, even though we only need to check one spot in the array. Uh, nothing else matters. So I have no idea why I did that. Um, I actually do need to look at that code I had there, though. I need to... Okay, car at, right. Um, so none of this matters. Um, 
I'm getting pretty thirsty. I will be right back in about um, I don't know, two minutes. I'll be right back. But I'm going to get a drink of water and I'll be right back. Sorry.
Okay, sorry it took that so long. Um, I had a knock on the door. It's actually a piece of the project. Um, they keep talking about explosions like physical project. The new aluminum extrusion. So hopefully we might be able to mess with that tomorrow. I can't make any promises, but maybe we will. It'll just depend on if everything makes it in time. Still waiting on a few more pieces. Um, so... Where were we? Ah, yes, right, my horrible code from last time. So, um, in each of these positions, we actually only need to check the position of the letter. So, um, right, we have our test word. So it would be test word dot, I believe it's car at is the function. And we're going to look at position i. And so we basically take that and we're going to subtract the letter A from it. So that means A will be zero. Um, so we, now we actually have a position for our array. Um, and our array was called um, all options. Yes, all options. So At this position in all options, uh, this will tell us whether or not that letter exists. Um, and if it does, so we can be a little sneaky here. So letter not possible is currently false. If this shows up, then as true, um, then so if this is true uh because it will be true or false to boolean um because all options only contains booleans if it's true the letter exists which means the word is still possible um so this this is basically the letter is possible or sorry the word is yeah the letter is possible in the word so we want to take the opposite of that and we also have letter not possible right not possible uh, is equal to and we want to take the previous state of letter not possible um, which would be false in general but as soon as one of these is true so if the were if the if one of the letters is not possible so not all options uh, we want to know and so that would be logical or so if this or this this is now true and i think that's the simplest way we can actually write this mm. i think there's technically an on an or operator um i think it's equal it's like or equal um Let's see if Arduino is back yet. Um, that is looking like a no. <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah, the Arduino reference seems to be dead. Um, so, what I would like to know is, yes, these ones, compound. Is there a compound or? Same as A is equal to A or 2. Wait, that's not, that's not or. That's, um, what is or? Um... Yeah, so I think we're actually okay to do this um, and make it even nicer looking by doing that. I think that works. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, Arduino seems to be not doing too well right now. Um, I'm not sure why, but yeah, that, that doesn't look good. 
Uh, oopsie. I uh, hope I didn't do anything. I think I just hit control A. Yeah, I just hit control A. Okay. Um, so I think we've simplified that a lot. That's a lot nicer and a lot shorter. Um, the question is, is it working? Um, hmm. So, uh, it's the best way we can figure out if it's actually working. Um, well, I think we can actually kind of assume it's working. I mean, that's, I, I don't see anything that could go wrong here. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll find out. Um, it may, okay, maybe we should actually test it. So, it takes in a test where it checks against the array, um, all options. So we need to set all options up. Um, all options is actually defined in reset everything. So we might do uh, all options at position zero, zero. Oopsie. That's not what I want either. Insert, there we go. Um, so all options at position zero, zero would be an A in the first position. And so we'll set this to false. And then we can do a few serial prints. So serial dot print line uh, is where it's possible always or uh, wait, uh, about so about shouldn't be possible but if we do serial dot print line is word possible and we do um, robot that should be possible because there's not an A in the first position so let's upload that and see what happens oh, what, what, what I make where, where? Uh, where? In function, bool is where possible string. Somewhere in here. Oh, this. Okay, let's see if this works. Oh, that's not a good sign. They're both one. <laughs> um, hmm. This should be a zero. So I think we're going to need some troubleshooting here. So... Um, let's see. line is our friend let's hang up now bull 26. Wait, 
Do I not have the right number of brackets or something? Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Um, wait. Oh, does it not know how to print a boolean? It knows how to print a boolean. Um, well, this can print it. I hate that that worked. <laughs> so apparently it doesn't like the fact I was calling it on an array and needed to be cast to a boolean even though it was already a boolean. I don't even understand what I just said. Okay, um, zero, 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 zero. Why is this zero? So this should not be zero. This should be one. Um, so all options at position test word dot car at first position minus the letter A. Um, okay, what is this then? Here's the question. Let's see what that resolves to. Oh, I'm sorry, this is not quite in screen. So it's 0, 1, 14, 20, 29. And then the second one is, um, so that'd be A, B. Well, that's correct. So what this is, is this is, so if you think about is first zeroth letter, first letter, 14th, 20th, 29th, or 19th, which is correct. So what's going on? So all options, zero, zero, false. Um, that should have worked. Is it because it's not volatile? Um, oh, volatile. How do you spell this? <laughs> volatile. Mm, sorry. Okay, that might do it then. Although it really shouldn't need to be that. Yeah, that should really not be necessary. Um, well, if it solves it, then we'll know that wasn't the issue. <laughs> yeah, half the time I don't know what I'm doing with this, really. It's just throw stuff at it, see what happens. Um, yeah, that didn't change anything. I didn't think it would. That is uh, unsurprising. Okay. So, wasn't that. Makes sense. Um, okay. So, if that wasn't it, what would happen if I... So, we know, we know that this is getting the correct number. Um, all options. Wait a second. Wait, I'm... Okay, yep, I know what the issue is. Never mind. Uh, we're good. So all options is a two-dimensional array. We need to put an I there. <laughs> that needs to happen. Right? Wait. Wait should this be an I? Character at... Yes, that should be an I. Okay. This should work. Go. <laughs> Yeah, no, no wonder it was not knowing what to do at all if that was what it was doing. Um, 
There we go, zero, one. Okay, that's what we wanted to see. Zero, one means this is working correctly. So, we've solved that mystery. We can get rid of this bit of code, too. Okay, we got half an hour left. Let's see if we can actually get the last bit of code implemented here. So, we have our functions, which are much nicer than before. Like, reset everything is nice and short. Actually, <laughs> now that I think about it, this shuffle word list makes no sense. Um, because this code is being run anyway. So I'm actually just going to put it up here. Um, we don't need a shuffle word list function. It's, we're running it every time anyway. Um, but I am going to put in a little comment here. Shuffle word list, like that. Um, fill... Um, comes with true and fill or reset after this. comments they're nice <laughs> so that function is now pretty good is word possible now works correctly um, and is much better written than it was before that should run much much faster um, so with all of that done we can actually get to the new part spent <laughs> so we need to go through all the words and if the word is possible we need to uh, so this is going to be another function, uh, because we, we might need to run this more than once. Um, let's see, do we need to have it output anything? Um, I don't think so, so we're just going to make it a void. And we're going to call this uh, remove letters. It's going to be a big function. So we're going to be relying on uh, the shuffle. The this doesn't need to be here. So it has to have been run after reset everything. Now I think about it, we might just put reset everything into this um, because we will always want to reset everything before it. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> Actually, maybe it makes sense to put shuffle word list into something. I don't know. We'll see. Um, might look better. But to remove the letters, what we have to do is we have to iterate across everything that is not the selected word. So the selected word is that first indice. Uh, so for, we're going to do i as usual, integer i is equal to, but in this case we're actually going to have it start with 1. i is less than, in this case this is going to be the uh, word count. I plus plus. And so we're just going to skip the first one because we don't need to worry about it. We're not removing anything for that. So given that, um, first thing we need to do is we need to find out if the word is already impossible. So if Where, uh, well, is word possible? Um, oh, and we need to put in the word. The word is going to be, uh, what's it called? All, it's called all words. Yeah, all words. At position I. So if this is, so if it is possible, we need to make sure it is not. 
uh, if it's not possible, we don't care. There's nothing we need to do at that point. But if it is possible, um, we need to remove something. So to remove that, we're going to uh, create a temporary. So we're going to call it, create a uh, int order. This is going to be five long equal to one, two, three, four, five. Just like you would expect. <laughs> um, and now we need to shuffle this. So we're going to basically do this all this code we did here again. Um, probably should make this stone function, but on, I'm not going to right now. Uh, int. Uh, we're already using i, so we need to use j equals zero. J is less than five. J plus plus. Um, int swap pause is equal to. Basically, going to actually grab most of this code. <laughs> Um, but in this case, we're always going to be going up to five. Sorry, wait. No, we're going to be going up to six minus J, I think. Let me think through this a little bit. So if we have, so we're starting out with zero to four. Um, no, it should be five minus J. Yeah, because we need it to be four and down. Also, this wait, this the last one of this will always be. Um, There's no point to doing this on the last one, is there? Because it'll just be zero and zero. The random number between zero and zero is zero. Um, this means it will return zero, which means it will swap position zero with position zero. Um, and that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we can actually make our code it doesn't matter because we're just doing extra operations but I think we can actually make this code ever so slightly more efficient by having it be word count minus one so it basically does one less loop because if it, if it gets to the word count like here our last thing is word count minus i if word count is equal to uh, oh, wait, let me think about this. So word count minus i, i's largest value would be word count minus one. So that would be one, zero to one, which would be zero. Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, so we can just do that. And that will... Um, I think we do need it here, but we don't need it here yeah because it makes no sense to uh <laughs> yeah uh and then just double checking here yes okay yeah so what we did there is basically at the very end of each list it was doing a a pick a number between zero and zero and then swapping the thing in position zero with the thing in position zero, which means it was basically just doing work to do nothing, <laughs> um, which isn't, <laughs> we were just basically setting it to be itself over and over, which makes no sense and was just wasting processing power. Um, so I think this is a little more efficient now. Um, 
so we need to do that bit of code. Then we need to create our temp int temp is equal to uh, order at word count, which would be the total, which would be five minus j minus one. So four minus j. Um, And then int, sorry, not, not int, um, order at four minus j is equal to order at j, wait, no. Swap position. Oh yeah. Swap pause. And then order at swap pause is equal to ten. Okay. <laughs> A lot of complicated stuff there to basically just shuffle this list of one through five. Um, probably unnecessarily a large amount of stuff um, because we're not going to use most of it, but that's fine. What this does is it makes sure that it's actually going to have a list of things to go through in order, um, which is important. So now we have an order we're going to go through. So <laughs> uh, we need to start on position one and go through until we reach the end. So. Um, I guess we will use a while loop. Um, well, I think we need to actually do a little more work than that. So we're, we're going to pick the first position that, uh, let's see. I actually want to verify this code works before I do anything else um, because I'm a little worried it might have an issue in it. So I'm going to do a slash loop and a star slash. And then I'm going to just copy the code here. Um, yes, this code here down to here. No idea why that tabbed in like that. Okay. And Let's be good. Okay. So we should see now. Oh. Is 
is if everything went well, we should see what looks to be a random shuffle of the numbers one through five. So three, five, four, one, two, that looks pretty random to me. One, two, three, five, four. One, five, three, two, four. This looks pretty random to me. I don't see any order to this. Yeah, okay. I think we I think that worked. So I think we can trust this code now. Get rid of it down here. And get rid of the stars. There we go. So this code seems to be working. So we have a random ordered list of positions to go through. I realize now it makes no sense to have this be um, one through five, it should be zero through four. Like that. <laughs> yeah, it's always nice when code actually works the first time. Well, I mean, besides formatting issues, uh, those don't really count. <laughs> So we have our list of positions we're gonna go through. So now we need to actually check each of those and uh, keep checking until we've determined. So the other thing we need to do is we need to be checking if um, we've removed an item. So uh, we know that there are, we're gonna be going through the five items. So four, well, do we wanna do, want do this as a for loop? Um, hmm. Because preferably we'd do this as a for loop, but be able to like exit early, essentially. Because um, the nice thing about for loops is that they reliably end. Uh, meanwhile, while loops do not reliably end, and having something not reliably end can be a problem. Um, but I think that might be okay here. Um, so we'll do a, we'll make an int and we'll call it a loop num, uh, and we'll start it at zero. And then we'll do a while loop, so while, and we'll do loop num is less than five. So, um, well, actually, maybe we should go the other way around. So, uh, no, this, this would be okay. So, well, it's less than five. Uh, sorry. So we, we're gonna have zero, we're gonna have one, we're gonna have two, we're gonna have three, and then we're gonna have four. So it would be four. Um, yeah. Okay. Where, where is this parenthesis coming from? Oh, that's where. So while we're looping through this, uh, we're gonna basically be able to exit this faster by making the loop number higher. And actually in that case, we want this to be three, I think. Uh, no, this would be okay, four. Um, so we're hopefully never gonna have to use this bit of code, but it's better to have it than not because if not, things go horribly wrong. Um, so we have a loop number. Um, so at the end of each loop, it's gonna to have to decide whether it's going to iterate up or not. So what we need to do is we need to check if the letter is possible. So yes, we're possible. So we have our spot, our position in our word to get rid of something. So um, we need to do that by doing a, oh goodness, I wanna make sure I'm getting everything here. So 
Um, of our order. Uh, so we need to do all words I dot car at and the position we're looking at is going to be the order at loop num <laughs> this is getting complicated um, so what this would give us is this gives us the, uh, the character of the word that we're looking at at the spot um, So we're going to call this the check letter, and this is going to be a car. <laughs> so this is the letter that we have selected for as the, the candidate, as you might say, for removing from all the future lists. But before we do that, we need to make sure that we can remove it. So if check letter is the same thing as uh, all words zero dot car at order loop num <laughs> goodness this is long so what we're saying here is if uh, the letter we're checking is the same thing as what we already have in the word we can't remove, or um, yeah, we'll do an or, or maybe that's making it too complicated. <laughs> Um, let's do it like this. So this is one thing. Or, so over here we need to check as long as there's enough letters left. So that would be letters left. Um, at position, um, order, loop num, is less than Six. Oh wait, less than so six. Uh, there have to be six letters available. One of them is special. Um, let me think about this for a second. So, um, so it's not the special letter, but there are only six letters. We need to make sure it doesn't remove it. So this needs to be seven. Um, yeah, it needs to be seven. <laughs> um, actually, what we can do is six and then do less than or equal to um, six. So if it is less than or equal to six, um, we can't remove anything. So this huge check basically is just saying, is just asking if it's safe to remove something. Um, so if it's safe, if it is safe to remove something, we can remove it. And we can do that by doing, uh, whether it be all options, I think. 
Yeah. Oh wait, we're we're, we're missing something then. Uh, <laughs> wait. Because we need to check if it's already been removed. Or no, we already did that with is possible. So we're fine. Um, yes. So all options um, at position. And all options is two dimensional, I think. Yeah, it is. So at the position of the position in the word, which would be order loop num uh, is the first position and then the second position would be the character we're trying to remove which would be all words uh, at position Uh, check letter. Wait, no. Oh, wait. Okay, I already, I already did this bit. Okay. So the ch check letter. Um. Wait. Why did I even set that? I'm never using check letter. Oh no, I am at one spot. Okay. Um. <laughs> check letter would be that minus a, which should give us the no the actual number. So this position is equal to false and then um, letters left at position uh, order loop num is equal to Letters left. Well, actually, I can just do uh, that minus minus. Okay, a little easier. <laughs> okay, that is a um, a nightmare of a thing there. Um, oh, and if we did it, then we can just say um, loop num is equal to four. And so what that'll do is that'll just exit the loop. <laughs> it, frankly, I think my naming convention is part of the problem here. Um, I might have to go back uh, after we, I mean, we're going to finish in just a minute here. So I guess maybe we'll end it here. I think I'm going to go back and maybe rename some of these variables. Um, things like, or, like order works, but loop num is confusing in this situation. Um, <laughs> maybe order, maybe order of loop or uh, order loop num needs to become a uh, a special name instead of car check letter. Um, maybe that makes more sense. <laughs> yeah, this is probably some of the most complicated, not maybe the most complicated functional code I've made, but some of the most complicated like logical code I've made. Like this is a real logic puzzle to put this all together and work with all these arrays um, to make sure I'm like selecting the right things at the right times. Um, but I kind of enjoy it. It's like a, it's like a logic problem or a logic puzzle. <laughs> um, it is eight o'clock. So I think we're going to go ahead and start finishing up here. Um, we definitely created some useful code up here. Like this is very nice code. This is very nice code. Um, this is really good code. This, this is, uh, this is a nightmare. 
This is an absolute nightmare that I think I can probably improve a bit. So I'm going to probably mess with that. But, um, <laughs> yep, thanks for watching. Um, yep, feel free to uh, think they were just the, the mods put, uh, ask us in the chat. So feel free to pass things along to them. Uh, but I think we're going to call it a night. I hope everyone enjoyed. And uh, don't stay up too late. <laughs> I know that everyone's a bit worried tonight uh, if you're in the U.S. with the election going on, but uh, we won't really know tonight anyway, uh, given that the Electoral College doesn't actually decide the election results until December. So, <laughs> um, yeah, don't stress about it too much. Yeah, I, I enjoyed this too. It's always nice to take a little break, do some... Do some uh, recreational coding. Mess around for a bit. So, everyone, uh, have a good night. Don't forget to be awesome. And we'll see you, uh, uh, well, tomorrow, I believe. So, yeah, have a good night.